tonight, I want to underscore that we are not making any decisions or recommendations around closing, merging, or consolidating any schools. We're simply providing information about where we have underutilized facilities and seats across our district to at a later time be able to make informed decisions around mergers and consolidations. Um, before I get started, I want to give a um, deep shout out to our RAD team. Um, they did a lot of work in terms of taking some core work off their plate so that we could do this work in-house. There was a lot of feedback from the original uh, Blueprint Advisory Group um, around some of the problems with using outside consultants. So as we brought this data forward, we used our own internal team for a couple of reasons. One, um, we have a rock star demographer on our team. Um, we have someone who was involved in our strategic regional analysis years ago and just has a lot of deep information about um, schools and kind of just all the footprint of our district. So I'm um, really happy to be able to leverage and use a lot of their um, just quantitative analysis and qualitative analysis to just show you where we are at this point. So I want to start off, um, as always, with our vision and mission um, and really underscore that although we've been talking a lot about budget reductions, we made an intentional decision to decouple kind of our budget reduction engagement from the blueprint process because at the end of the day, this isn't about just saving a dollar. Um, this is about how we can strategically reduce our footprint and increase quality because that is really the call from many of our parents and students is how we increase the number of quality schools. So as we're thinking about the schools that we need to create, we believe all students deserve an educational experience where they're deeply cared for, nurtured, and challenged to reach not only their full academic potential, but their full human potential. We therefore strive to create learning environments where all students develop curiosity about the world, leverage their innate creativity, and develop a strong sense of self to be on a solid path towards college, career, and community success. For those of you who were here earlier, we heard the students give so many examples around that. Our mission as a school district embraces the old adage that it takes a strong and dedicated village to close opportunity gaps so that every child receives an excellent education. So that really is our North Star um, as we go forward with this process. And it is very technical in nature, what we're sharing with you, um, but I believe our community is a hella smart, informed community. Um, this was information, again, that was asked for last year. So we have incorporated a lot of the feedback even from the original bag, Blueprint Advisory Group. Over many years, Oakland community has worked tirelessly towards our mission and vision, demonstrating some significant progress along the way for many of our students, yet, we all know too well from our collective lived experiences that our current efforts are far from satisfactory. Our ultimate goal is to ensure that all students receive a high quality educational experience. And until we reach that goal, we must keep our sleeves rolled up and stay at work to create a 21st century public school system with fewer schools that are better resourced higher quality school programs that satisfy student and family interest, and access to quality regional feeder patterns in every neighborhood. The Community of Schools policy sounds the district alarm for our community to engage in the hard work of reimagining a public school system that keeps students at the center of the conversation by acknowledging the possibilities for increased quality learning opportunities for all students if we work towards discovering how best to leverage the assets from district public schools and charter public schools while recognizing that there are significant areas for improvement and opportunities for learning in both public school systems. While we recognize that competition is a point of tension in our complicated landscape, and understand that the district must continue to prioritize its financial sustainability, we must remain open to new ways of figuring out 
how we will coexist to better serve all of Oakland's public school students. The elements outlined in this policy speak to concrete ways we intend to build a path forward to create a community of schools. The first step in the path forward is the development of the citywide plan that provides a roadmap for sustainability, strategic use of our facilities for our district program schools, our charter schools and community, equity and access, revisiting enrollment policies and strengthening feeder patterns in all neighborhoods, and quality, creating a design process focused on school improvement to guide the difficult yet necessary decisions we must make to merge and consolidate our schools. So you'll see here our timeline. Um, and again, tonight is not about saying these are the schools we're merging and closing. Um, we will get to that point in February and we have not decided yet which schools. We've been engaging in conversation with school leaders as the data that you're seeing tonight, we've shared with all the principals to start to get their feedback around what the proposals may look like. And we absolutely intend to share um, where we are with communities. So there's nothing about this process that's meant to be hidden at all. We're sharing with you now just the two levels of methodologies that has given us to this point um, tonight. So our outcomes tonight are really twofold. One, to define what will be included in the citywide map to be approved in February, and two, to develop a shared understanding of the analyses conducted thus far towards creating the citywide map. So again, back to some feedback that was shared with us earlier in the blueprint advisory process. There was a lot of parents and schools that really talked about it wasn't good enough to just look at some of the changes related to school programs. We really needed to look up front and in the beginning, not as an afterthought, where we're gonna put our special education programs, early childhood programs, adult ed. So when we get to the finished um, iteration of the citywide map, we will have recommendations around um, all of those specialized programs as well. So the two level of analyses that we will talk about this evening are facility capacity analysis and location analysis. In the facility capacity analysis, we consider where students are projected to go to school in five years based on historical enrollment patterns in order to determine the minimum number of schools we will need. In the location allocation analysis, we considered where students are projected to live in five years to identify optimal locations for schools based on where students live. So again, tonight, we are not proposing a set of mergers or consolidations. If there's one thing I wanna make sure everyone leaves this room knowing is that we are not uh, giving you any information to say we're merging or closing a particular number of schools. This methodology is really to answer the question, what is the minimum number of schools we believe we're gonna need based on where students go to school and the seat capacity of our existing facilities? Again, as our data team completes analysis over the next few months, we will then make final recommendations regarding changes to district school programs, district specialized programs, and charter school programs. 